Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of my stormy water enjoyers. This is your captain speaking. We are going to get started casting some storm spells. We are heading towards stormy waters, and if you keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle while we wait so that I can promote this stream, we'll be started before you know it. Just give me a few moments. All right, we are rocking and rolling for a stormy Thursday. Welcome, everybody. I am Jordan. I'm your captain, and we are going to start storming off tonight. Uh, I see a few people already in. This is awesome. Yeah, I'm very excited that you guys are enjoying Legacy Storm Thursdays. And today, we're going to be bringing it back to our roots, the Epic Storm. We have a new version, version 14.1. It was publicly released or announced on Monday. Although if you were a Patreon supporter or a YouTube supporter, you got extra info early. Um, so this is uh, this is our new this is our new baby. We're really excited about this one. We're playing for abrupt decay. This is uh, oh boy, this is this is something, right? We uh, we went from four prismatic ending all the way back to four abrupt decay. Uh, we're going uh, we're going hard in the cannot be countered. That's the important part about abrupt decay. So let's um, let's start talking about the legacy meta right now. After the banning of White Bloom Adventurer and Expressive Iteration, we were expecting a few things, right? We added Massacre because we expected some death and taxes. We can also hit Collector Oof from our Savannah and Tundra players. Um, really pretty good stuff all around. Um, and then Abrupt Decay actually is going to be here for all of the remnants of the non-blue matchups. Uh, it's not as good against them as something like Prismatic Ending is. However, the important thing is that Abrupt Decay is very good against the blue opponents. Things like Cephalid Breakfast, which is 
still one of the top dogs in the meta right now. And eight cast and anything that's playing counterbalance, Abrupt Decay is pretty exciting on those fronts. So we are we are respecting this quite heavily uh, with four of them in our ma in our sideboard main deck. Ugh, not yet. Um, four of them in our sideboard and. This is just a blanket answer to everything three mana value and under, right? So really, really enjoying this. This has been something that I've been testing out for several weeks now. Uh, this has kind of been in the running for a while. Uh, and now we're just finally getting to an official version. But to support this Abrupt Decay, this lean on Abrupt Decay, I suppose, we are changing up the mana base a little bit, right? We used to have an EDH mana base, one of every duel that we can play and want. Now we're actually doing things a little bit differently. You'll see we, we still have the one Badlands, right? But we are backing it up with a double set of our favorite combo, Underground Sea and Taiga. We have two Underground Sea and two Taiga. So we still have our five dual lands and our six, seven, ooh, I can count, seven fetch lands. Um, but we still, we have the double underground seat, double taiga, so that we have the ability to turn on abrupt decay um, as effectively as possible, right? Now, our colors are still all good. We still have three mountains for our pulverize. We still have two brain, uh, two blue sources for our brainstorms. We have three black sources. We have all that we need. Um, really, really strong mana base right now. And that is the other major change in version 14.1 that is necessary to complement our playset of abrupt decays. Our, our fetches kind of changed around just a little bit to match, right? We were on two Scalding Tarns and two Verdant Catacombs, and then a three of Bloodstained Mire. The nice thing about our fetches is that there's no dead um, dual land, right? In previous versions, for example, um, one thing, Verdant Catacombs, for example, couldn't get a Volcanic Island. So you had to play around that limitation a little bit more carefully. Here, every single fetch land finds every duel that we need, and it's a little bit more of a well-rounded um, mana base in that aspect, right? So this is, again, a solid The Epic Storm list. We are always go happy to be leaning into Galvanic Relay in the main deck. We're working with Mishra's Bobble instead of Ponder. A lot of the things that you know and love from the Epic Storm as of late. Uh, changes in the sideboard are going to be that place out of Abrupt Decays. We are still maintaining that Ooze, Ave Progenitor Ooze, is the best way to get out of or create, I guess, sticky situations for our opponents, right? Uh, ooze, that looks kind of sticky. So. This is a major sideboard plan in matchups that we can talk about later. And Massacre in the sideboard is a is a card that we're going to be on the lookout for. If it is pulling its weight, then that's fantastic. I don't expect it to pull its weight necessarily in leagues, which are fairly combo-centric, graveyard-centric, um, compared to, say, challenges or prelims. Um, so this is not going to be necessarily the best testing ground for Massacre. However, um, playing on sun Saturday and Sunday challenges, playing the prelims throughout the week, that's going to be where Massacre really shines. Let's see. Any other thoughts that I'm missing? I'm already queued up for a league. Um, I will say, if you want to uh, get information like this early, uh, we've had this in the canon for a little bit, uh, you can become a YouTube member and get access to YouTube videos early. You can also become a Patreon member and you get access to articles early and you get access to our special members section of the Discord where we have been talking about this list as well. Um, let me tell you a little bit about how to um, 
gain access to that early information um, by supporting us as a YouTube member. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsfirm.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsfirm.com slash donation dax that's enough for now let's play some magic all right and it is indeed time to combo we are already queued up and we are on the play we've won the die roll uh yeah phoenix uh tiger brainstorm hand is definitely something to keep track of right we have two tigers um however we still had a bunch of non-blue duels that we were playing before um, that we just had to, to keep track of. Um, it's just going to be something to think about. This hand looks really good. I don't know what our opponent is on, um, but this is a, a pretty good, solid Galvanic Relay hand. We can do so um, if we find another mana source or a card to imprint under Chrome Mox. So we're going to keep this. Our opponent has also kept seven, and we'll start us off. I might consider end step brainstorming off of an underground sea. Um, but a polluted delta sings to an underground sea discard. Oh, nope, ponder, personal tutor. We are playing doomsday, okay. I am going to end step brainstorm here. Uh, we need to kind of change the speed with which we're playing this. Okay, so we found the things that we wanted. I'll put back Two chrome, yeah, two chrome mocks, and draw one of them. Now, uh, something to consider is if they doomsday pass, we have the potential to natural storm kill them. However, the fact that they have tutored up Doomsday and are uh, capable of thinking and breathing at the same time means that they might have a same turn kill. I don't think that waiting is a good idea. I think that that also like they might just have a force of will in their hand. Um, so I think that I'm just going to be casting a Galvanic Relay this turn. And I think that I can also cast a Burning Wish. Five. Yes, I can. This is bait. Um, however, if it does resolve, I will get a Thought Seize. Likely. It is not going to resolve. They've pitched a ponder, which is going to add to our storm. And whoop, I guess I should cast this Chrome Mox first. And not imprint anything. So we've got eight off the top and then nine with the Mishra's Bobble. This is a pretty good Galvanic Relay. I just hope that our opponent isn't going to turn to us. So we knew about the Chrome Mox already. Wish Call Talisman is a good a good draw. We're exile, I suppose. More mana, Veil of Summer, Lion's Eye Diamond, Echo of Eons. Wrong place for that card, but that's okay. It's not a bad relay. Not a bad relay at all. So I'm gonna upkeep this. Um, another Doomsday. We already knew that, didn't we? Yes. 
I guess I should have just waited if they were going to cast a Doomsday. Um, then I could have seen what their top card was and figure out what kind of pile they were running. Ooh, okay. They are passing. They did not have a turn two. And that Burning Wish was a really good draw. Okay, let's turn on Mox Opal. I will float a green here. Uh, red, uh, draw all the cards, yeah. And if they Doomsday. Yeah, unfortunately they didn't Doomsday and this is just gonna go away at the end of turn, but I, I do like the thinking about that, on that. So let's, um, Cast a Lion's Eye Diamond. How about a Rite of Flame? This only makes two. We don't have one in our graveyard. Hard casting a daze, perhaps? I'm not sure. We are. So I'm going to pay with the underground sea and see if they do anything else. Nope. Okay. So with that being the case. I'm going to, let's see, that's six, seven mana. So I can echo. I can do so with Veil Backup, which I kind of like. That juices up their hand again. I, I'm one short, one short, six, seven, eight. Yeah, one short of Adnaz. Um, I could relay again. Um, we know that their hand is Doomsday, two extra unknown cards. Um, let's echo. And I can still float green. Off the hard cast. Okay, there's a land. Uh, let's see, what does this do? One, two, three, four mana. So, actually looking like we could. Well, we can't spin again without giving them a claw. But I will cast this claw. Okay. So we have a veil-backed galvanic relay giving them a claw, which I'm unsure about but we were kind of a little short on mana to do anything else we could get a uh, mox opal with this wish claw talisman and convert a black mana into a blue mana and um, so they haven't cast anything this turn yet oh they cast a daze yeah you're right You are correct. That resolved. Okay.
Well, unfortunately, that didn't really do anything. However, we can relay, which I think is what we need to do. And then we have uh, an echo as well, just waiting. So let's get a lion's eye diamond here. Can't be countered. Red. Relay for 13. We don't know about this Doomsday in hand anymore. Adnaz, some mana. So we can add nauseum next turn. Can we do so with protection? Uh, yeah, Stark, you got it. We are, we are doomsdaying, uh, or our opponent might be. Hopefully not. I will look at their top card, see what they're drawing, and then if they are going to doomsday, then we can bobble them again. Um, I was, I'm kind of holding on to the echo uh, for a passing of the turn pile. Um, I might be able to echo kill them. Um, I thought that drawing, what is it, 13 cards is better, th uh, next turn is better than drawing seven now. Um, and having the potential to kill them that turn. I'm, I'm not sure that was my thinking about that. Uh, I didn't voice that out loud, but I thought that relay drawing more cards was going to be on the whole better. But um, maybe giving them a Wishclaw Talisman and a Tutor uh, just is a little bit too too greedy to, to relay. I could see an argument for that. Uh, yeah, Nick. Um, if we survive, I will be cracking this bubble. Hmm. going on here for our opponent. Uh, one, two. They have a Pact of Negation in the main deck. Wow, this is a kind of a classic list, isn't it? Um, are they going to brainstorm and, and win? Street Wraith, crack the pile. Okay. And there's the Consider. Deep Analysis. Okay. We are, we are indeed deceased. Um, this is game one, Stark. Um, well, they just had doomsdays for days. And they're going to draw a Lotus Petal and a Thassa's Oracle and have a lethal Thassa's Oracle. Okay. So the sideboarding is fairly clean. Um, relay is not bad against Doomsday. Um, in fact, sometimes you can keep it in, uh, especially against Tempo Doomsday. However, against a turbo build, Thoughtseize for Galvanic Relay is our standard combo sideboard plan, right? Um, 
Veil of Summer is still very excellent against, we saw Grief, we saw Thoughtseize. Um, I didn't actually see, I didn't check for a Duress. Um, I was just looking for Thoughtseize. But um, there's there's likely Duress in the pile. Um, I just forgot to check. And we're going to call that good. I would like to play first. Um, this is a decent hand against discard. <clears throat> um, but it's not terribly fast, it's not terribly disruptive, and it's not terribly protective. We don't have a Veil of Summer, for example. We don't have Brainstorm. Um, I I think that this is going to be a mulligan. We're going to mulligan this hand. Okay, this is uh, much better. We're going to attempt a combo on turn one, and we're going to keep this uh, bottom of brainstorm and we can lead on Dark Ritual Wishclaw Talisman, which might eat a Force of Will. Heck, the Lotus Petal might. Um, if our opponent is feeling really cheeky. Hey, Dominique, how's it going? And they're thinking about this. Force of negation, that's okay. Pitching a personal tutor. I am going to float blue off of this. I think that this is gonna be a sculpting hand and I would like to be able to brainstorm after this. Uh, well, kind of punished because I can't back up my Thoughtseize with Veil of Summer now. Um, hmm, that's too bad. However, I still am going to thought seize them. And I'm going to do so off of an underground sea. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate. I specifically had a reason for floating blue instead of black, and we just happened to cycle into, or wheel into exactly the punish. Um, okay, so they have Force of Negation, which I've got covered with this Veil of Summer. The Duress is going to be a problem. Uh, it wouldn't have been necessarily if I floated a black and then I could play the fetch land and hold up Veil of Summer, but alas. Um, they're a little bit further away from casting Doomsday. This Ponder might be able to find them a Dark Ritual. But I'm going to take this Duress. Um, keep my hand protected. And we're, we're going to see how things go. This, uh, this Echo wasn't the greatest. Um, it's not bad, but certainly could have been better. Um, yeah, we definitely have more one mana black spells on rate, but the odds that I'm going to be dark ritualing into a combo are fairly low. Um, and I kind of liked the idea of being able to sculpt. Uh, the punish was drawing the three thought seizes as opposed to the four brainstorms. So I think that numbers were in my favor, but they might not have been. That was a good draw. Um, they chose not to ponder, so they're just holding up Force of Negation. That's fine. They have Street Wraith. Um, 
We'll see what they do. Yeah, I think the numbers were in my favor, Dominique, but it's like, it's really close. And um, like one card difference. I don't think that there's a right or wrong answer necessarily. It's just what kind of things you are expecting your echo to, to bring about. I just guessed wrong. Okay, well, they're going to be able to Doomsday now. Uh, they have drawn a... Oh, they're not Doomsdaying. Wild. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can echo from the sideboard. Uh, I can relay from the sideboard. I can pop this out, actually. Uh, there's a moto update. I doubt that they fixed the kind of window resizing thing that happens whenever I do this. Yep, I did not. It's broken still. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm going to... Relay, not relay, echo, excuse me. I'm going to attempt an echo of eons. This is a hard cast force of negation. Uh, we are playing around days at least. Uh, I could get goblins, um, empty the warrens, but that does not seem like. That does not seem like the play. Uh, yeah, sure, just what I said. Um, I think that that's going to be too slow. Uh, they have Street Wraith to crack their pile, and if they draw another mana, then they have the ability to um, potentially win on the same turn. And I don't think that Goblins is gonna be fast enough. Um, even though we will have Lethal on the crackback. Um, as it stands, before they cast a Doomsday, we'll have two turns. We'll be giving them two turns. And if they spend next turn sculpting, then I'll attack them for 10. Then they can, um, uh, 10 or 11 or 12, excuse me. Then they can turn, uh, same turn me in two turns from now. I hope that made sense. Force of Negation, pitching a Ponder. I will play all of this out. Um, okay, does that change anything? Uh, not the draw for the Brainstorm, but the uh, fact that Veil of Summer resolved and my Storm is higher. Um, if I get, so I have five mana. Um, if I get goblins, then that's going to be 14 damage. I don't think that that's going to be something that I want to do. They have Street Wraith and Doomsday, unknown card. Um, I could relay or I can attempt a combo with Veil Protection. I think that this is going to be a little bit different because I know that they're super close to comboing off. So I'm not going to crack the Lion's Eye Diamond. They're going to be drawing four cards technically. Um, I'm going to echo. Floating a blue and a black. No need to make decisions like I did in, in the first turn. I have both now. Um... Okay, so this is not ad nauseum, but is this lethal? So I can imprint a Rite of Flame and the, under the Chrome Mox, or I can imprint an ad nauseum under the Chrome Mox. And then I have, 
Okay, hold up. So if I were to get Metalcraft somehow by casting the Wishclaw Talisman, for example, then I might have the ability to do something neat. Um, however, to do that, I would be sacrificing a major color. Is that a problem? Probably not. So, uh, so if I cast Wishclaw Talisman off of these two, cast Chrome Mox, Imprinting, and Ad Nauseum, then I have one, two, three, four, five mana. Uh, Wishclaw gets six, seven, and I can Burning Wish for, oh yeah, I think this is lethal. Okay. Um, Yeah, this is, this is a clean lethal. Just took me a second to get there. Okay, so we got game two. Now we have to get, win game three on the play. Uh, less likely, however, you know, it's possible. Um, yeah, Nick's got it. Um, Okay, so Echo was good there. We were able to convert that Echo into a win, whereas in game one, we went for a relay and they were able to kill us in the next turn. Um, mm, let's resubmit. So many drills, absolutely. And yeah, if you're a member, like I told you about before the match started, <clears throat> before the match started, excuse me, uh, you can spam Tendril's emotes, you can spam Sadnaz emotes or Bryshock emotes. You got a lot of cool things to interact with chat and me on a live stream, plus all of the extra cool stuff that you get from being a YouTube member, like videos early. You get some uh, some, some pretty cool stuff, honestly. Um, but at the very least, right now, you can spam some Tendrils. Um, our opponent is rethinking their sideboarding. And I'm pretty happy with mine. Hello, I um, am un oh, I'm unsure about your um, foreign name. I'm not sure. I don't speak anything other than English. I apologize. Um, I'm going to mulligan this. They have kept seven and this is not a keep either. We're going to five. Oof, this is not how I wanted things to go. This is not great. Um, hmm. Underground Sea does not cast four of our cards. It allows us to cast a Dark Ritual, uh, but we don't have Veil, and this Lion's Eye Diamond might be going to the graveyard with Discard. Hey, welcome. Thanks for becoming a Storm fan. You get the awesome emotes that we were just talking about. Um, what's your name? I, I, you know what? Actually, I have, I have Google Translate on my computer. I can be an intelligent human being. Takashi. Uh, Moriyama. Probably. I hope so. Hello. So I'm gonna mulligan this. This is this is not great. This is the best thing that we've seen so far. I'm gonna bottom brainstorm, brainstorm. I'm gonna keep this first off. I'm gonna bottom. Well, it might be Adnaz brainstorm right of flame. One, two, three. Hmm. One, two, three. Yeah. Um, okay, so Superfluous Brainstorm. We are one, two, three, we're two mana away from an Adnaz, and uh, that's kind of unlikely to happen. 
especially since we need to bottom two more cards. Uh, Brainstorm Lion's Eye Diamond could technically do that, and we would draw Dark Ritual, but against a heavy counter magic deck, then that's probably not going to happen. So I think it's going to be Nas and Rite of Flame. Uh, and we'll see how things go. It's not looking great. And they're going to thought these duress us. Okay. Well, likely taking a brainstorm. Uh, Lion's Eye Diamond is the other pick, uh, I would imagine. Uh, chain combo decks. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, what kind of what kind of chain are we talking about? Chain of vapor? Are we talking about just like storm chaining spells together? Because that's that's my personal favorite too. Um, okay, so they took the lion's eye diamond. I'm gonna play out this lotus petal. This will allow me to brainstorm through a daze if that's something that I need to do. Um, another land doesn't hurt. Um, man, they kept a seven, though. Okay, they're pondering. For what it's worth, I think that our four was the best hand that we had seen all of our mulligans. Uh, really fairly unkeepable as far as everything goes. Seven was potentially okay. It just was really slow. Okay. I am going to just pass. No sense in doing anything. They chose to not shuffle with their ponder. Um, one thing that this green the Epic Storm list is not doing is casting Silence and Orm's Chant, which was our way to interact with Doomsday or Cephalid Breakfast, for example, these Thassa's Oracle decks that kind of struggle um, to lose <laughs> against the Epic Storm. It, they have to be trying really hard. Um, Luster Storm. Okay, well, they are going to get my Rite of Flame. Uh, good to know about Fluster Storm. I would not have been planning around Flusterstorm. However, uh, I don't think that I'm going to get to a point in my combo where I have to consider it anymore. Um, oh yeah, Storm is a fantastic way to ex appreciate all of the intricacies of drawing a bunch of cards and casting a bunch of spells. Um, okay, I'm going to leave that in my hand, they might burn another another discard instead of comboing me. Um, but this might just be a uh, shieldred, and I'm gonna get a little upset. Nope. Okay. I doubt that they would bring in shieldred um, just for the Echo of Eons value, right? Uh, I mean, I'm technically the brainstorm deck as well, but. Um, Okay. Chose not to shuffle. Found Dark Ritual Doomsday. One card in hand. If I can find uh, Brainstorm and then Brainstorm find LED Echo, then we have Lethal. Um, if their hand is Brainstorm, they... They can win. If their hand is... Uh, consider they can win their hand is ponder they might be able to win i'm not sure probably be able to win with a ponder in hand any way to crack the pile uh since we know they they can disrespect us by not having an empty library is what i'm essentially saying they can they can stack it so that thassa's oracle is in the middle and then just win with two cards in library um Unless this is Abrupt Decay, who knows? Abrupt Decay is a terrible thing to board in against Doomsday. Don't do it. Um, yeah, we didn't want that Brainstorm anyway. Hmm, not at all. It wasn't critical. I will take one now, though. 
I will absolutely take one now. Um, they are choosing cards I haven't seen them select anything from the graveyard yet um, nothing's highlighted um, it will highlight if they do select something that's in the graveyard so I'm kind of looking out for that um, I doubt that they they would want anything it would really just be the fluster storm if they have like a one of and they need to pass the turn or something like that um, but I, I kind of doubt that Are we dead? Looks like it. I mean, they can just cycle, 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 and they they should have been they could have been good to go, but they're gonna do the deep analysis thing anyway, and we'll be dead. I'll let my opponent play things through. Sometimes they enjoy that. Sometimes it's a hassle, but. Um, <clears throat> just to make sure that they stacked their pile properly. Yep. <clears throat> okay, so we lost to Doomsday. I'm not terribly surprised. Doomsday is a fairly difficult matchup. However, in game one, going for the relay and dying immediately afterwards, as opposed to an Echo of Eons with, um, was it no mana floating or one mana floating? Um, maybe Echo was going to be... Um, be the way to go. Yeah, bolt them. Man, I, w I wish that Tendrils of Agony was an instant. Um, that's okay. Sometimes you have to get lucky, and we mulligan to four. Not very lucky. Um, all right. So if you want to know a little bit more about this deck, I'm going to be writing an Infernal Tutoring article series uh, coming out in... I think it's two weeks. It comes out at the end of the month, really. And uh, Patreon members is how we uh, we support our our writers, myself included, with Patreon for theepicstorm.com, where we write about the Epic Storm. And version 14.1 is out, so we have a lot of really cool information about that, and it will be in my article. And you can solve some storm puzzles with... Um, with the newest and greatest version out there. Uh, you actually have access a week early to the to the article, to any articles, and you get some shop discounts and things like that. Um, I can I can tell you about it, but let's let's have let's have Bryant talk about it for a second. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further You know what? That's the token pack. I'm gonna actually talk about that in a little bit. So here's the Patreon. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our Patreon to get articles seven days early on top of other sweet benefits and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. Okay, we are up against an opponent that people know sometimes, and I would like to play first against them. Uh... You know what? This is actually not the worst. We can... Um... We can turn one Wishclaw Talisman, or we can just kind of land, go, figure out what our opponent is playing, and um... we're really just missing a little bit of extra mana. We've got lands, so we can play a little bit of a longer game, and then we're missing protection. And if we have a uh, couple of baubles, perhaps, to draw through into protection. Um, might not be the worst idea ever. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep this, and I'm just going to play the land go game for a little bit. Um, our opponent often plays a little bit uh, of a slower game. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to just jam the Wish Claw Talisman out. It is a potential uh, turn to Nas if I 
you know, drew a Lion's Eye Diamond. But now Bloodstained Mire is making me kind of wish that I had done that. Um, they play quite a bit of, a, of everything. Oh, Thought Season Grief. Okay, so this is potentially just Reanimator. Um, not something that I was expecting. Uh, obviously, I was just talking about how they play some slower decks. Um, kind of more controlling Force of Will decks. But this is not that game. They're going to double discard us and be presenting a 3-2 with Menace as a potential clock. Probably going to take a Mishra's Bobble here. Stop my redraw. There it is. And, uh, ooh, Urza's Bobble. What are you doing? That throws everything that I was expecting out. Um, yeah, uh, Moriyama, I was gonna say Reanimator, but this Urza's Bobble screams that something is up, right? And they see a Mishra's Bobble. Oops. I was too busy. Uh, let's play the Badlands. We're gonna use this Mishra's Bobble as a scry, um, as opposed to figuring out something that they have on top of their deck. M Mishra's Bobble. So we're playing at least five copies of Bobble. Um, I'm a little unsure about what this is. But the clock is not super fast yet. Knock on wood. Um, him to Torok. Okay. We're doing doing things. Um, stuff and things. So end step, I'm going to bobble myself. Brainstorm, I... Uh, I like... This is, uh, my, my fetch is my blue source. So that's not the greatest thing ever, but we'll see what I draw for turn. Okay, Lotus Petal is not bad. Uh, Black Red Scam, eh, okay, makes sense. Just port the, uh, the modern deck over into Legacy and you get dual lands and reanimate and him to Torok, sure. So we're playing a little bit of a quicker game now. Uh, Veil of Summer seems particularly good here. Thoughtseize. I'm going to brainstorm. Uh, hmm. So I can... Veil to protect and kind of draw through this brainstorm. Or I can keep Mox Opal in my hand and then draw the veil for next turn. Uh, because that way, if they don't discard me, I will still have three mana to Galvanic Relay in a couple of turns. Um, Let's do that. Yeah, the bobbles are a little bit interesting. Um, not quite sure. They might have delve spells. They might have like Gurmag Angler or something. Blood Crypt. What? Scourge of the Skyclaves. Okay, so we're Scam Death Shadow, potentially. Uh, okay, that is um, gonna do it. We cannot, so next turn we're drawing a Galvanic Relay, and even if they cast a black spell next turn and we veil to draw a Galvanic Relay and then some other card, there's no way that other card can do anything for us to win. So we're gonna concede this game. Um, a little rough. Okay, so Veil of Summer, fantastic. Galvanic Relay, less good. Thoughtseize, pretty decent. 
Um, the only question is, do we want any abrupt decays? Um, they might be... No, no, we don't want abrupt decays. The only thing that it could possibly be is the, uh, the Dothy Voidwalker, right? And I don't think that that's something that we need to be concerned about. Um, it certainly could potentially disrupt us. Um, generally not something that we care about. We can play around that. Uh, anything else? Nope. We're going to smith this. I would like to play first. Um, okay. Against a heavy discard deck, I can Underground Sea, Dark Ritual, Wish Claw Talisman, Lotus Petal, Mox Opal, Wish Claw Talisman, be left with the Burning Wish in hand. I'm going to keep this hand. They have mulligan to six. Yeah, we're just gonna poop our hand out and figure out what our opponent can do about it. Um, hopefully, not much. And at the very least, the first Wish Claw Talisman is going to get under a potential Mind Break Trap. Can't Mind Break Trap that. Oh, they were just f 6 okay. Well, do I want to... So I can echo here? I'm not going to echo. I can echo next turn if I really need to, but this is a potential um, peer into the abyss on turn two. And I think that I would be more excited about that. So they are Shadow. Okay. Shadow, Scourge of the Skyclaves, Grief. Um, so pretty heavy on the discard. I would imagine they're playing Thought Seizes, Griefs. They might even have um, Unmask. Um, Burn and Reanimator? Oh, man. Well, those are those are certainly piles of magic cards. Um, obviously, mine is the Epic Storm, but I am curious to know what other, uh, what other decks chat likes. Meltdown. So that's taking out the Lotus Petal and the Mox Opal. Um, okay. Burn keeps you honest. Oh, oh, okay. Well, that is an ad nause. Let's see if this is gonna be any good. We have yet to hit a land drop. There's our land drop and a Rite of Flame to go along with it. Chromox is good. Echo is not great, but now we are cleared to go all the way down to uh, two, right? Burning Wish, okay. Chromox, Rite of Flame. We're gonna stop there. Aluren's a pretty good one, for what it's worth. trap nope okay uh yeah price of progress one heck of a drug i suppose um okay nothing changes on draw uh but we have to keep a fairly resilient hand to discard um what i would really like to see is lion's eye diamond lion's eye diamond echo of eons maybe three Lion's Eye Diamonds because they can double discard us that we saw. Well, that's pretty close. I'm gonna keep this hand. Oh man, High Tide is such a fun deck. Um, well, I should say, I've never actually played High Tide. It is something that I want to play on the channel for stream. Um, but 
I love watching it go off. It's super fun. And it's going to be a lot easier on uh, online as opposed to in paper. It's easier to keep track of, you know, 30 floating blue mana, for example. Um, okay. Our opponent has gone to six, and they've started off with a Blood Crypt, Fetching and Shocking, and they're going to Thought Seize us. Okay. Likely taking Brainstorm or Lion's Eye Diamond. Um, I don't know what their hand is going to inform their selection towards, uh, but it was Brainstorm. Okay. And they have a Grief. Wow. Okay. Double discard it is. I guess this is what the deck is designed to do. Okay, so we'll play a Verdant Catacombs so that we can scry with this bobble. Um, they might have a Hymn to Turok after this. Um, we'll see. Thoughtseize. Okay. Triple discard. And they've kept a one lander. Good to know. Underground Sea. I don't want that. I mean, I do want it. I'm going to be... Do I want an Underground Sea? Or do I want a Taiga? Is it better to draw a Brainstorm or a Veil of Summer here? Probably a Brainstorm. So I will draw to that end. Ah, well, there's the Veil of Summer. Of course. Just it's the exact opposite of what we were hoping for. Um, Thoughtseize. I will Veil of Summer. Mistress Bobble. Okay. Wow, that is four discard. Dark Ritual is not bad. I am going to bobble them. I'm not going to be able to scry or anything like that. There's their land too. Let's see what happens. Is this going to be a hymn to Turok? They are fetching immediately. Um, Blood Crypt. Is this going to be a Death Shadow? They have their they have their three three. I would like to draw an ad nauseum. I have two looks at it. Brainstorm's not bad either. Thoughtseize of my own. Not the greatest at this point. They have a red blast. Oh my gosh, they do. Their hand was rolled up. Uh, okay. And a Darcy. Straight off the top. So they have a pair of three threes, and they're bashing in. Uh, okay. Our turn, we've drawn a Taiga. I mean, I'll play it. Uh, yeah, they have, they're Hellbent. Okay, we're going to 10. Yeah, O'Doyle, that, uh, Burn versus Storm is always interesting, right? Um, Cabal Therapy, knowing what your opponent is playing always helps. Uh, I'm going to keep Mox Opal in my hand. If they draw something like a Hymn to Turok, this is going to kind of pad my safety valve of the Rite of Flame Dark Ritual. Thoughtseize. That's not going to do anything. Uh, not playing the Mox Opal is doing nothing against Thoughtseize. They'll probably take the Dark Ritual. Mm-hmm. So we've fallen down to two. We need to draw an Echo of Eons now, I believe. Uh, that's not going to do it. I will thought seize them. Go out on my own terms. Wow, uh, that was not going to work. If Even if I drew... Uh, and Echo of Eons, they had the Pyroblast in hand. Uh, that game three was a very strong showing from our opponent. Um, quadruple discard in the early turns, Pyroblast, and then another Grief Thoughtseize. 
Um, no, 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 no. The grief was a delirium or a, a trigger from Darcy. So pyroblast and then another thought seize and then another pyroblast. Um, not boarding in thought seize. That's fine. Um, I think that I didn't like galvanic relay. Um, I'm not sure if that's correct or not, but uh, Rakdos Shadow Scam. Rakdos Scam, essentially, right? The whole grief, reanimate grief kind of thing uh, that is a semblance of the modern variant of Rakdos Scam. But anyway, that was uh, a little brutal. I thought that we were doing pretty okay. And then uh, it certainly didn't turn out that way. So, um, SW, what would you what would you have done sideboarding wise instead of the Thoughtsies? Um, yeah, Doomsday Doomsday Rakdos game, not the greatest. Um, okay, so we're gonna find a league opponent, and so I was talking about not being able to keep track of all of the blue mana floating in High Tide um, in paper. However, it actually is a lot easier, and I can tell you about that in a little bit, I guess. We've already been paired up. I would like to play first. We have won the die roll every single time, and this is a keep. Oh boy. Uh, yes, please. I have no idea what our opponent is on, but this, this is 100% a keep. Otis Battle, Lion's Eye Diamond, Mox Opal. Hey Malone, how's it going? It's good to see you in chat. And I will wait to deploy the, the other Lion's Eye Diamond. Uh, okay. So I can put back Underground Sea, or I can put back Scalding Tarn, Underground Sea. Um, play out the Taiga. I can have Veil Protection and then add Nas on turn two. Um, I could add Nas right now, um, unprotected. Is that what I wanna do or do I want to wait for Veil? You know what? I don't usually do this, but in this case, I am going to Google my opponent. Um, Uh, well, their last results were a little while ago, but it was, um, Natural Order. So they might be playing the new Bant Natural Order deck that only has four forces. So let's see how it goes. Okay, turn one ad nauseum. Feels pretty good coming off of the back of those two. That echo, oh boy, I spoke too soon. I'm gonna McKinley this ad nause. Uh, Galvanic Relay, I can go down to three. How are we doing? Not bad, okay. We're gonna stop there. I'm going to kind of hope to get this Mishra's Bobble in before they concede. Chase the Mind Sculptor. What's going on? What year is this? black off of that instead of red, excuse me, and then cast the Dark Ritual. Galvanic Relay is doing its thing as an imprint under Chrome Mox, and then the other imprint, the other imprint can be this um, Echo of Eons, I suppose. So I'll just green here. Red, blue, black. I'll just float all of my mana now. 
And get the tendrils of agony from the sideboard. Storm 20. Oh boy. All right. Uh, do you guys own Storm 20 baseball tees? I don't. I own a Storm 20 hoodie. It's actually really cozy. Um, but Storm 20. Look at that. That's fun. Okay, I'll put that back. I will begin sideboarding against a Jace opponent. Jace the Mind Sculptor. Um, it's Sylvan, Sylvan Library. O'Doyle, in this deck? Against in the Ad Nauseam deck? I don't I don't know about that. Okay, before I know that they're a collector oof deck, I am going to just board in kind of a standard control package of Ave Progenitor Ooze to Abrupt Decay, and I'm going to board out Mox Opal, Chrome Mox, Echo Vions. So this is kind of our our control. Um, yeah, Chase the Mind Sculptor, 2012, absolutely. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to call it. And if I, if I call it right, I'm going to, I'm going to be on cloud nine. Our opponent is on a staff of the storytelling Jor-El deck. Uh, jor is the, I think it's a one, two. Uh, whenever you draw your second card, create a two, two cat token. Um, with Staff of the Storyteller, it's kind of like a little combo. They think that it's cute. It's the only deck that I've seen recently that's been playing Chase the Mind Sculptor. So I'm going to call it that we're playing against a Staff Joariel um, Bant control deck. We'll see. Um, no, I have not tried... Um, the Sylvan Library tech. Uh, we we aren't we aren't looking for incremental value turn over turn. Uh, we have Galvanic Relay for that. That's really nice uh, that it was in my opening hand. This opening hand is kind of garbage. Otherwise, though, um, maybe I just have enough time. I probably have enough time. I'm gonna keep this. Um, oh yeah, the the is it. Oh man, I know what you're talking about, the 8-8 mech that creates pilots and things like that. Yeah. Uh, Greg, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, my my league is not doing very good. You can see right up here that it's going to be a little bit of a toughie. But other than that... Okay, Scalding Tarn. I will, I will float that out. Um, now this could just be blue-white control. I don't know. I'm sticking to my guns. Bant, Joriel, Staff of the Storyteller. Rest in peace. Okay. Sure. I don't. I don't particularly care about that. Uh, another dark ritual is pretty good. I want permanent mana sources to feed into this galvanic relay as opposed to rituals, which are one-off and don't pay off on the next turn. Um, closest thing to that would be like a Rite of Flame because I would be able to increase my Rite of Flame mana um, in the following turn, but since the rest in peace is out, that negates that. Uh, man, what are we doing? To fairy. Sure. Hmm. Okay, I am going to brainstorm now. Well, that was pretty okay. I can put back a couple of lands. and then fetch those lands out. Actually, I'm only going to fetch the Taiga back, and then this is going to get a Badlands, so that I have my my triple threat. Um, let's cast a Lotus Petal, and a Rite of Flame. I'm actually not going to cast both Dark Rituals here. Um, I will cast one but I want the other one next turn. Ooh, I really hope they interact with this. That would be fantastic. 
Uh, yeah, two underground sea, two taiga now. Um, while my opponent is thinking about this, force of will. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me pull up this list. We are on two underground sea, two taiga, and a badlands as our mana base, which I talked about a little bit in the intro. Oops, that's not the right window. Uh, yeah, we also can actually hard cast an Ave Progenitor Ooze. Okay, now, now that my opponent has graciously offered me some Storm, <clears throat> this relay is going to get us Land, a Veil of Summer, Lion's Eye Diamond, Dark Ritual, Chrome Mox, Land, and of an Ave. <laughs> Speak of the Devil. All right, we are we are in a sticky situation. That's what I'm gonna call it. It's slime time, and our opponent is. You know what? I probably should have bobbled um, in my turn because they can actually land a Narset, and this bobble is not gonna actually do anything. I was a little bit busy with the with the Ave. Oh my gosh! What the heck? Sure. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, Jace the Mind Sculptor, rest in peace. Island, island, plains, plains. <clears throat> um, sure. Oh, we are actually not in their end step. Blue Elemental Blast. Good to know about. Okay, I'm going to draw a card. Lotus Petal. Burning Wish. Okay, so we have two green for Veil Veil, and then triple green for the Lion's Eye Diamond to cast the Ave. So what I'm gonna do is start off with getting a second Taiga, feels great, absolutely fantastic, and cast a Veil of Summer. Um, that just resolved. They are not interested in doing anything this turn other than sitting by and dying. We don't actually have to Ave now. They have graciously given us the opportunity to win. Uh, do I need to imprint anything? Five, six, seven, eight. I'm not going to imprint because this Veil of Summer can be an extra storm for the lethal, lethal swing, swing, bada bada. Okay. Um, look at that. Tendrils of Agony. How about them apples? Slime time didn't have its time to shine. Uh, however... We were able to come back and take that relay into an actual just lethal. Um, the double Veil of Summer might have disincentivized our opponent from interacting. Pretty decent. Uh, although they didn't know they didn't know about the one in hand, so I don't know. They just thought that they could beat Slime Time, and we were able to actually just kill them. Uh, Blue White Control. Uh, yes, SW. We can just win. Absolutely. So sometimes uh, you're trying to do all of this stuff and you miss lethal and it's hard to keep track in paper. I was talking about blue uh, storm, uh, high tide, there we go, that's the words. Um, keeping track of all of your floating mana, all of your storm. It's really easy to do with our the Epic Storm token packs. You don't have to be playing the Epic Storm to use these token packs. You can be playing Commander. You can be playing Storm. You could be playing whatever your little heart desires. If you need tokens, we got them. So um, let me tell you a little bit about our token pack and you can support the Epic Storm site writers like me and Bryant and all of the rest of the team by purchasing these and using them. Uh, tell us how you like it. I love mine. I'm going to get another one. We just got a giant order that came in recently. We've got a ton of these. So you want it, you got it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members-only content, and... 
I did it again. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Choking Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. All right, we are all queued up for our fourth opponent of the evening. Um, yeah, these, these token packs are great. I um, actually ran into a couple of them in the wild recently at a local event, and I was really excited to see some, some Storm players out there. Um, they were using them for Storm, but I've seen some EDH players as well. I would like to play first. We've won the die roll every single time. This is uh, pretty nice. Mm, double redraw, double scry if we want it. I'm going to keep this. I'm not going to play out both baubles. Uh, our opponent has mulliganed to six. Um, some little sleeves for your token packs. I mean, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Uh, if they make them that small, let me know. Um, I would like to. I would like to sleeve up my token deck. That would be. That would be adorable. And we're gonna call it good. We look like Delver, for what it's worth. Um. Turns out we are a Rite of Flame deck. Is our opponent playing Delver? They might be. Ooh. Ponder. Okay. Uh, this is a more comfortable Delver start, if it's Delver, as opposed to something like a show and tell or something like that. Um, yeah, we. I guess we need to find little sleeves for these bad boys. Um, be so fun to shuffle them and, and you get a little you get a little deck of cards be kind of fun we gotta make it a thing I'll talk to Bryant uh, there's no way we're gonna offer that sorry guys <laughs> if you find them though let us know okay bobble scry um, burning wish is good I will I'll keep that uh, they're a quarter of the size of a standard magic card um, you know what? That's actually not a bad idea. I need to get some uh, better photos of me so that I can put my face on them. That would be that would be the first step. I was actually just talking to Bryant about that. My headshot on the website is super um, contrasty. I was, it's a an artistic photo that's been like, the background has been photoshopped out. It's not a professional photo. Oh no, we are playing up against show and tell. Okay. What are we doing here? Is this just a sneak attack? Do I get a turn? Show and tell. Okay. I will put in the underground sea. Uh, for what it's worth, I really do just hope that this is Emrakul. Oh, it's Emrakul! I've got a chance. Okay. If this was Grizzlebrand or Omniscience, there's no way in I was going to make that. Galvanic Relay is not going to do it. So I'm going to shuffle. It is an interesting way to get around the uh, the Sacrifice trigger, actually. Uh, the Annihilator 6 trigger here. Um, of just putting all of our cards into uh, into Exile. Okay. Lion's Eye Diamond? Blow Spell. Okay. Uh, what's our plan? We've got... Three, six, eight mana. So we can Echo of Eons, but we can't. 
Uh, flashback Echo. They have three cards in hand. Their Ponder, probably, you know, I actually didn't look. They chose not to shuffle, but it was probably setting up their combo. So let's, um, let's try to Echo. Unfortunately, I can't um, Burning Wish for protection for this Echo. We're one mana short of that. Uh, although, you know, now that I'm thinking about this, five, six, seven, eight. So I can Burning Wish, and that could draw out interaction. I don't hate that. Yeah. Oh, it just resolved. That's too bad. Um, let's grab a Thoughtseize um, so that it's in the deck if we need to. But if they just stared in the face of a Burning Wish and said, nah, you're good, um, and we're able to Spell Pierce. Ah, well, that's why they didn't make that happen. Okay, I'll concede. Uh, no, 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 no. We can technically draw exactly a Lion's Eye Diamond and spin again. I will, I will play to my out of sacrificing all of my permanents and going to three life and then potentially drawing a Lion's Eye Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond off the top. Nope. Okay. Oh, well. It happens. Um, the Sneak and Show matchup has gotten a little bit better since the inclusion of Thoughtseize. Um, now, this is a combo deck, and just like we talked about in Doomsday, our combo matchup sideboarding plan is out Galvanic Relays and in Thoughtseizes. Uh, talking to Sneak and Show players of old... Uh, Thoughtseize was one of the things that they were most worried about uh, against the Epic Storm. And now that we've brought it back, our show and tell, sneak and show, omni tell variant therein uh, matchup has actually improved. Not super great, but you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not like the other Force of Will combo decks like Cephalic Breakfast and Doomsday. Um, it is a little bit better than that. All right. On the play. We are a black mana away. We have a Mishra's Bobble to start figuring it out. And if they show and tell us, we can put in a Wishclaw Talisman, which is one of my favorite things to do. Um, and we have Veil back up. I'm gonna keep this. Yeah. So they don't have discard. So this Lion's Eye Diamond is actually more protected in my hand than on the battlefield where it can get potentially abraded or melted down, uh, things like that. So I'll just, I'll just bobble them now. And they have an island. Always curious about island choices. That one's kind of cool. Uh, that was exactly the same amount of mana. So uh, Burning Wish, Thoughtseize, uh, is three mana, and it would save three mana since um, Echo of Eons costs six anyway. So it was actually going to be the exact same amount of mana. I did think about that, though. Okay, they chose to shuffle. And we're drawing, well, another Wish Claw. Land? Nope. Okay. And the the rails, well, excuse me. It's coming off of the rails. That's the phrase that I was trying to go for. 
Brainstorm. I'm going to cycle one of these veils at the end of turn um, to s just draw a card. Um, I think that we need that. Obviously, we're opening ourselves up to a surgical extraction on Veil, vale, but oh wow, look at that. Come on, come on, there we go. Um, we've got a play set of Wishclaw Talismans. And we can start playing them out now. I think that we have our next few turns all lined up. They can spell pierce this. I'm fine with that. Ooh, we got two cards out of it. I will him to Torok my opponent. Uh, the full text basic lands? Yeah, actually a friend of mine, a local friend, is uh, well known for having the full text foil basics in their commander deck. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous commander deck. It's um, Lord Windgrace. It is blinged to the max. It is a high-powered commander deck, obviously. Not a competitive commander deck, but it is gorgeous. And they just picked up a tabernacle yesterday. I watched the whole thing go down, and they sleeved up. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Uh, oof. They sleeved up a tabernacle and put it in their pile. That is a little rough. Yeah, our poker hand was insane. We got a full house. We had a four of a kind. However, this is not looking the greatest. Show and tell will allow us to put a Wishclaw Talisman in. I can only hope that it's another Emrakul. Crystal Brand. Nope. So they can they can draw up to 14 cards. Um, yeah, Dominic, why'd you why'd you desert us like that? Um is a great idea, but Blood Moon, come on. Um It was both trade and money. And there's a there's a few things that were that were involved. Yeah, Moon is certainly a choice. Uh, however, it is the right choice here. Okay. So, obviously, this is not a great time. Um... Our options include passing the turn, casting Echo of Eons, hard casting it if we wanted to, giving our opponent a Wish God Talisman, or ad nauseuming unprotected. None of these things am I excited about. So I will continue to pass the turn. The second we draw a Mox Opal, um, we'll be good to go but I don't think that we can claw for a Mox Opal right now um, because we both need black mana to get this Dark Ritual online um, and Veil of Summer. Um, or, I don't know, there's a few things that we need. So, that would have been good too. Yeah, any... Heck, I'd even take a Chrome Mox. All right, they have 14 cards in hand. Even if we don't play basics, Blood Moon is not necessarily the best against the Lotus Petal Chrome Mox. Um, oh, what are we doing now? We uh, omnisciencing Atraxa. That's also pretty okay. Uh, wow, they have Surgical Extraction that doesn't hit anything. They can show and tell Emrakul if they really want. But this actually is not a bad time for us. Um, 
there's no forces. So they chose Misty, Simeon Spirit Guide, Show and Tell, Brainstorm. Misty Rainforest, so all the other lands can go. Simeon Spirit Guide, so they didn't keep the Emrakul. They might have another one. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Uh, oh, they had a Surgical in hand, so they, okay. So they kept a Brainstorm for their instant and the show and tell. Okay, so that's the four. One, two, three, four, yep. They had the surgical in hand. Yeah, plus the other 12 cards in hand. Plenty of things to do with the interaction that are, that's available to them. They now know that we don't have a main deck. Uh, yeah, it's the same art, okay. A main deck win condition, we have to go through sideboard so they're at eight which would actually end up being lethal if we had a main deck tendrils of agony we do not we're gonna see what they discard hmm. yeah there's a few basic choices that are eh. Where is it from DMU? Okay, so the, I don't think that they actually made too much of a choice in the basics. This is just kind of what they've got with their account. Um, let's see what we draw. Okay, seven cards. They discarded. Well, we know three of their cards in hand. Wow. No, they discarded the Misty and the Simeon Spirit Guide. We know about the show and tell. Okay. Um, let's see what happens. My week has been pretty all right. Thanks for asking. I have enjoyed my time. And it is wrapping up actually today was technically my friday tomorrow i i've taken off uh for some personal time which is great uh okay so i think that we have enough mana that we can i wonder if they have fluster storm I don't know if we lose to force necessarily because we can just burning wish again, right? Um, so I'm gonna hold control. This is gonna get red mana. So they can force this, which is just fine. And then we, oh, what? What? Do they have the... Uh, Hold up. Let's play this. Uh, oh, we don't have Veil of Summers. We don't have Veil of Summers in our deck. Okay, so... Hmm, maybe I should have gotten Thoughtseize. Although that... I think that we're still dead to Fluster Force of Will anyway. Um, regardless of what we choose. Yeah, I think that I could have played this back much better. I am realizing this now. Although if they fluster, we can Lion's Eye Diamond get a Dark Ritual and pay for enough copies that we can still kill them days okay so this is an interesting thing um we cannot let days 
go on the stack. Uh, we have to crack Lion's Eye Diamond now. Otherwise, we won't be able to use Lion's Eye Diamond as a mana ability. I was talking about this last stream. Um, can't be used as a mana ability. Can only be used at instant speed, or anytime I can cast an instant, I should say. Okay, do they have Fluster Storm? Days. Something tells me they have Fluster Storm. Oh my gosh. We take it to a game three. Okay, I played very poorly. I think that I could have gotten a Thoughtseize at some point along the line there and then resolved a Burning Wish. Um, that was totally undeserved game three. Uh, but I'm going to take it. I'm not going to ask too many questions and we're going to go. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing this later after the stream uh, and make sure that I didn't really screw up. Um, but I think that I could have been able... I, I was definitely able to thought seize there. Um, I'm going to mulligan this. Mm. This is not good either. This I will keep. And I'm going to put back a Mishra's Bobble. And a... Oh boy, do I try to echo? So if I hit a plus one, if I hit a green source, I should say, I can have a protected echo. Otherwise, this is a turn one empty the warns. That's not good enough. Okay. Yep. I'm gonna keep. Oh no, I don't have I don't have metalcraft. Oh, that was so stupid. Oh, I just Im immediately assumed that Mox Opal was going to be on. Mm. Okay. That was great. That was super, super awesome. Um, that's okay. We can just draw a Lotus Petal, and we'll be good to go. They chose not to shuffle their library. Lotus Petal does it here. Underground Sea is not bad doesn't cast any of the cards but it doesn't look it makes us look like we kept a hand that was playable um oh man that one's gonna punish the bottom was veil of summer so that i could actually keep lion's eye diamond and uh turn on metalcraft uh i'm doing okay today actually uh this is a little frustrating but as far as as far as I go, I'm actually doing pretty okay. I it's just not thinking straight. But thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Okay, that is an artifact that will eventually be good. Um it looks like they're brainstorm locked. Uh they did not play a fetch land. Um and they played uh, just another volcanic island after their brainstorm. So they might have been looking for land two and three. Nope, there's land three. Blood Moon. That actually helps me out. Sure. Land it is. Look at that. Okay, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, four cards in hand. Do I want to echo unprotected? I do not. I'm gonna wait. Our, our hand has changed up a little bit and we have gained some new information. Uh, one of them being that we do not have an opponent that has a combo, we have an opponent that has interaction in their hand, <laughs> so um, we're gonna take it a little slower. Now, next turn, 
I can technically Burning Wish. What are we doing here? Simeon Spirit Guide. Oh, we're on that plan. Yeah, I'm not echoing my opponent yet. Okay, so here's the thing. They can't daze. They would have to force of will this Burning Wish. And if the Burning Wish resolves, I can get an Echo and immediately go to discard and um, put it in the graveyard so that I can flash it back whenever I want to. Um, yeah. They can't Spell Pierce, they can't Fluster Storm, they can't Daze. Uh, we're gonna get the Echo. Turns out, uh, Goblins actually would have been good here. Three cards in hand. Uh, oh, they kept six. Um, they have three cards in hand. And since I have the Lion's Eye Diamond, do I actually even want to discard this against a surgical, a surgical extraction opponent? No, I don't. Glad I thought that through just for a little bit longer. Um, Okay, we are an artifact away, a zero mana artifact away. I'll be specific. There it is. This might draw out interaction. Nope. Okay. I will cast a Veil of Summer here. No, that's not going to draw out interaction either. Wow. Okay. Um, okay, so floating blue and black. I'm going to echo Vions, use all of my red floating, just in case I need a bunch of other colors, because I still have mana here. Oh, do they have... I'm not going to say it. Uh, oh, okay. It's surgical extraction. It's totally fine. Um, it's not the greatest, obviously, but I was I was worried about uh, another free spell that I won't say yet because the turn is not over. They obviously kept for a reason, and surgical blood moon is not the greatest reason, but it's not nothing, right? Um, that was nothing that was actually nothing um oof okay so i get to thought seize them at the very least i can't even veil of summer to try to draw a card um mm. okay force omniscience ponder I think I'm taking the sneak attack. They have Lotus Petal, which means that they can ponder exactly once to try to find a basic. Um, we're not sitting too bad. Uh, but I think I am going to take the sneak attack. That was not the greatest echo. Um, and they're going to still be swinging in for two. Kind of unfortunate if that's how this game ended. Um, there's the Lotus Petal, and they get to cast a Ponder with it. I'm doing this immediately. Yep. And... They chose to shuffle. Taking two. I wonder if they're just going to melt down for one immediately, or for zero immediately. Um, which actually helps me out a lot, because I don't have to worry about the meltdown now. Mm hmm. Well, okay. I definitely don't have to worry about the meltdown now. I would like to draw bunch of artifacts and a 
burning wish. That's not too much to ask for, right? There's the burning wish. <laughs> uh, okay, I don't need to do anything. Okay, two artifacts. Two non-Mox Opal artifacts. Uh, zero, please, no wish claw talismans. I should be specific in things that I wish for. Okay, so we can peer if the next two are zero mana artifacts. Yeah. I'll play that out anyway. Um, I have no black mana. Now I could have relayed, actually. Ooh. Yeah, drawing the land was allowing me to relay for four, which is actually not the greatest. I'm not sure if I like that. Um, yeah, technically there is a Mox Opal left. Okay, maybe I'll... So they, already, they have a Force of Will in hand, so it's not protected or anything like that um so i'm not gonna relay or anything like that spell pierce in the bin for our opponent i'm gonna play a mox opal okay so they have one force of will at least I hope that their hand is just full of cantrips. Um, big yikes. The drawing of artifacts would be really nice right now. I would like to draw some artifacts. Um, I would like to turn this mop mopal on, uh, but oh boy, this uh, spirit guide is getting in. I don't have that much time. Hey, they have a basic. They, <laughs> they have a basic mountain. Okay, chrome mox. That's good. Uh, hmm. What do I do here? Do I cast the Chrome Mox? Yes. I'm going to imprint a Dark Ritual. As opposed to going to discard. So... We need one non-Mox Opal zero mana artifact off of the top. And then we have a chance, depending on what their cards are. <laughs> oh, they've discarded the Atraxa. Okay. Let's see it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now, this is the bottleneck. If they immediately go for her, oh, they didn't. Oh my gosh, okay, okay. <clears throat> Sitting up a little straighter now. I'm going to float a blue. So we have black, red, and then this lotus petal is for green. This mox opal is for green. I am sitting up straight now. Uh, well, let's take a brainstorm. They might pyroblast this. They might just force this. Wow. Okay. I am going to veil here. Draw out any more potential interaction. They have another. Okay, that's all going to happen. Now they have to have a third. 
counterspell in order to win. Do they have three? Doesn't look like it, folks. Did we get there? Oh my gosh, we got there. Look at that. That was to the wire. To the wire. That Simeon Spirit Guide almost got me. Very last draw, or set of draws actually, were the Chrome Mox into the Lotus Petal. We needed two zero mana artifacts to even have a chance. They had two interaction spells and they had to interact with that Brainstorm. Uh, so we could fight over it with the Veil as opposed to fighting over the uh, Burning Wish, which we were not going to be able to win um, unless Veil, but we found another Veil off of the Brainstorm. All right. Whew. That was, that was pretty good. So we are two and two playing for a positive record. I'm pretty excited about that one. Um, not gonna lie. That was, that was really cool. So, tendrils for the win. Uh, let's try to take this one home, shall we? Let's play a league match. Now, um, yeah, <laughs> y'all need to subscribe, absolutely. This is fantastic, this is super fun. Um, to the wire, that edge of your seat kind of, kind of draw, figuring out what that last turn was gonna be. This is why I love magic. This was this was fantastic. Obviously, it feels good when you win, and if I didn't draw that Lotus Petal, it wouldn't have felt very good, but the ability to have outs at that very last turn, man, Storm is just, Storm is just super fun, right? Okay, we are playing an opponent that we have lost the die roll to. First time tonight. We'll see how it goes. I really am liking this list. Um, the abrupt decays we haven't we haven't played up against something that abrupt decay is particularly good against. Uh, we haven't brought in all four against say like eight cast or gruel initiative. I'm gonna keep this in. Um, yeah, Tony Scapone, uh, fantastic content creator as well. Um, storming off all the time. He was in chat last week. We were talking about Black Saga Storm because that's what I was playing. Okay. Island and Relay are a favorite combo of mine. I like my opponent to play Basic Islands and I like to play Galvanic Relay. Uh, super fun combo. So John, they I could have found another Veil of Summer with that, that Brainstorm uh, or another Burning Wish. So fighting over the brainstorm may not have been the wrong choice for our opponent um, but it certainly was the wrong choice in the game seeing our side of things Ooh, Urza Saga okay so maybe this is uh... oh is this 8 cast I don't know if they're playing a lot of basic islands That was a good draw. Uh, let's try this all out. We're going to spew, as they say. Give our opponent something to think about with this Wishclaw Talisman. Force it adds another storm. Uh, two islands. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've... Oh, that resolved. Wow. Uh, that feels good. So I am going to fetch, because I don't necessarily want to get more lands from this relay. And... I'm feeling okay about this. I can use this Mishra's Bobble to draw up to eight cards available. Nine cards with my draw for turn. Um, I 
Brainstorm, Lion's Eye Diamond, Another Bobble, Lotus Petal, Chrome Mox, Wishclaw Talisman. That's pretty good. Uh, you know what? This could be... Uh, an opponent that's playing Narset. But I am still going to... Hull Breacher. Okay. So, yeah, I am not cracking this bobble. <laughs> the really nice thing about this is that... Oh, they needed me to crack bobble for treasure. I don't know if they have another one. No, they totally could. Um... So I was I was thinking Narset, and then I realized, oh, they left three mana open. I'm not gonna bobble into a hole breacher, and then they actually flashed in a hole breacher. Okay, so this is gonna be uh, protected Adnaz. I think one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, it's actually not. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's not a protected ad nauseum. But they didn't have a force of will. Or maybe they didn't want to force the wish claw talisman. Uh, the other thing that I could do is, so this is dying next turn, um, is this, uh, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, nope, this is not a, an empty the warrens protected either, um, Let's go with Adnaz. We'll play the one out here. Okay, they do have a force. Unfortunate. And they have the days undoing. Wow. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, that's all we can do, because we can't claw. Uh, I took a little bit of a risk there, thinking that our opponent would have forced the Wish Claw Talisman if they had it. Um, they did not take that bait. And this might be a Pithing Needle on Wish Claw Talisman. Uh, if that's the case, they need to activate this first. But that's not what they're doing, so they might they might be getting a Chrome Mox or a Mox Opal. Um, to have the requisite three mana to Hull Breacher. In which case, I can re-fire Adnaz next turn. Okay, Lion's Eye Diamond. So they can Echo. Or not. So the attack means that they might have a day's undoing. Uh, Echo doesn't end the turn. They did have a day's undoing. Interesting. So I guess why they just want to keep playing, which is totally fair. Um, probably better. This is also a really rough matchup. Um, This is uh, one of the worst, actually. Because yes, like Malone said, they are a uh, they're a Karn, the Great Creator gamer. They are a Stompy deck that is a Force of Will deck. It's also not very good against uh, that we're not very good against. 
Oh my gosh, what are we doing? Wow. Seagate restoration on the hard cast. Uh, okay. Hmm. We have come across a wild string of matchups, actually. Um, we've come up against a Red Black Scam, Doomsday, Show and Tell, Sneak and Show, um, and then Blue White Control and Karn Echoes. Uh, not the greatest matchup spread. Blue White Control, obviously, what the Epic Storm is designed to beat. These kind of fair blue decks just eat it up for days. Um, and they're echoing again. All right, we are we are totally crippled. Um, yeah, I get to choose which replacement. That's fun. And then they can just do this all over again. Wish Claw, activate... They have seven mana. We are, uh, we are done for that matter. Um, but I do want to see, are they playing Karn? They're, they're playing Karn, but, um, maybe I'll, I'll learn some extra information along the way. Honestly, they really don't have to do anything else. They can just, uh, call it good but they're going again chalice of the void see i don't know if i would have um i guess it's a fair assumption to be playing chalice echo okay i will i will concede here well the uh the last match is actually something that we want all do i want all four abrupt decay in I might not. I want the Thought Seasons, that's for sure. Galvanic Relays are pretty garbage. Their Force deck... Uh, oh, the Brainstorms are gone. That's the, that's the sideboard plan. So, yeah, here's the sideboard plan. We are taking out Brainstorms and Galvanic Relays. Um, and then Echo of Eons probably needs to come out too. Uh... Yeah, and we might bring in Ave. Let's see. They yeah, they probably sideboard Force of Negations. Let's see if we have something in the sideboard for this. Um, we have Karn Forge and Urza Echo, but I want to be taking out Echo of Eons and keeping in. A galvanic relay. Wait a second. Here's this. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping in an, a galvanic relay. Uh. Yeah. Three wheels. Three wheels. Hard. Hard to win against that one. And we're gonna be playing Jund Storm. So I need to get it in my head that Underground Sea is not the first fetch. Um. This is something that I struggle with when we're boarding like this and taking out the brainstorm. I typically get underground C on autopilot and I need to remember not to do that. So I'm saying this out loud to you to hold myself accountable. Uh, I would like to play first. Well, we have the underground C anyway and a turn one ad nauseum. Uh, I am going to keep and shove. We have to get lucky in this matchup. This is not a matchup where we have time to sculpt or anything like that. And I know, I know that they are a four force, potentially up to four force of negation. So the eight forces, this is not looking super ideal. But our hand, if we're keeping this, has to be a go. 
I'll imprint the burning wish. Like if everything else goes to down the dumpster, I would like uh, an abrupt decay to kind of clean things up. Oh, oh, okay. We get the turn one. All right, I'll take it. And this looks like it's gonna be lethal. I will keep going until six. Um, wow, yeah, turn one, fantastic, I will take it. I, I needed that and I have to win one on the draw. Nothing's gonna change. However, uh, it's significantly harder. Okay. Ah, uh, the double taiga. Where's Phoenix? We were just talking about this at the very beginning. Uh, double taiga, abrupt decay, dark ritual. I can technically um, empty the warrens on turn two. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can empty the Warrens on turn two. I have the Abrupt Decay if I need it. I can imprint a Dark Ritual if everything is awful. Um, otherwise, the Abrupt Decay can be the imprint so that I can Dark Ritual. This also could be a Galvanic Relay. Not the greatest thing. I'm gonna keep this. And so, yeah, Tanner, the... Um, the un uninteractive hand means that their turn one was going to be Hull Breacher, Echo, Lion's Eye Diamond, and a Soul Land, and a Lotus Petal, or something like that. Something ridiculous. As it stands, we get to go to our turn one without them doing anything. So I'm pretty excited about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that change things? Do I imprint the Abrupt Decay now and cast a Wish Claw Talisman? Uh, yes. Or maybe it's the Dark Ritual. I think it's the Dark Ritual. This Abrupt Decay might have, uh, whoops. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm not casting Abrupt Decay. <clears throat> yeah, they could have had a Chalice for sure. Now they have a Force effect in their hand because uh, they are thinking about this wish call talisman okay they pitched a narset which makes sense because narset is kind of the hardest one to cast uh hold breacher you can land soul land and cast it you need the two blue pips oh is this just a chalice no Ooh, did they keep a super interactive hand? Okay. Well, I made a decision, and that's allowing me to cast Abrupt Decay. It is not allowing me to cast Ad Nauseam. Uh, I cannot Burning Wish for a Thoughtseize. They're all in the deck. But this Burning Wish can get a Pulverize, for example, if I need to do that. Oh, they don't have a Karn? Oh my gosh. Uh, hey, Brian's here. Everybody say hi. Okay. Well we do need another black source this abrupt decay can deal with uh whatever they get off of this urza saga potentially uh or or save some life if this construct gets really big mostly just because i have a second one rolled up so this the first one can be a little bit um a, a little bit a, used more liberally, I suppose. Hmm. So they are going to make another construct. That's all good by me. And 
and they get survey says like if they get a lion's eye diamond they can wheel um but they don't have a hole breacher out they don't have a nar set out and if they pass then i can abrupt decay the lion's eye diamond and say pithing needle okay i will abrupt decay that i will save um a life point and Wishclaw Talisman is a card that I want to draw. And I'll do this now. Save a life point, because we are literally holding Ad Nauseam in our hand, so seems reasonable. Opponent has three cards in hand. Hey, it's the Wishclaw Talisman we were just talking about. We could just kill Constructs, but we don't have a black source. So I was thinking, save a... I don't know. Hmm. Uh, oh no. Okay, okay. I was really afraid that it was a uh, four mana play. They have a force of will. Okay. Yeah, I'm not saying that my abrupt decay play was the right one necessarily, but it was the one that worked. So I won't look a gift horse in the mouth. Um, wow. Okay. This is a This is an Adnaz if we want it. We can wish claw for a Oh it's it's unprotected and we know that they have a force in hand. Okay. So in that case am I going to burning wish for something and then make them interact it would be a pulverize if that was the case i think maybe not the pulverize maybe it's a peer um maybe it's a relay maybe i just abrupt decay the narset buy some time I would be going to 10. Uh, Narset is a, just another draw, but it's a pretty solid one. And I could reduce their clock by a lot. Um, by abrupt decaying a construct. Instead of the Narset. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna decay one of the constructs. Hey, Maddie the Immortal. Hello. Welcome to chat. We're in game five or game three. We forced a game three with a nice turn one against Karn Echoes. Ooh, double force now. That's not great. I will. Protect my life total. Uh, we are playing for the positive record this game. Scalding turn. That's not bad. Um... <clears throat> is not great. Or I can add Nas unprotected, they force, and then I have Burning Wish Veil of Summer to potentially 
follow up with something? No, all of my Burning Wish targets draw cards, so that's not great. Uh, I think we can just... No, yeah, let's, let's Burning Wish now. Let's try to draw something interactive uh, out from our opponent. I don't have a double protected Nas, and they have two Force of Wills. Uh, I should probably just relay now. Um. What are we doing? Oh. Oh. Um. Sure. You know what? Uh. We were going to relay. You could have just, like, stifle the storm trigger but whatever you know what? um that was bizarre they could stifle our wish claw talisman activation they could stifle our storm trigger Maybe this just means that they have multiples. Oh boy. <clears throat> so we know that they have two Force of Wills in hand. Our plans need to rely on the fact that we can play around that. Um, currently, unless our opponent has another nimble obstructionist, it, they do not, this is the best way to do that. Burning Wish, Burning Wish, Gromox, Eeth. weird it was a weird matchup absolutely um hull breacher sure i'm not going to be leaning into this galvanic relay uh if i do that then i'm not sure I'm going to give them the ability to tutor something up, and their their tutor targets are silver bullets. Um, Echo of Eons. They ended up drawing into all of the things that they wanted. Uh, unfortunately, that just means we are kind of SOL. Uh... You know what? That's actually reasonable, Bryant. Yeah, they might have let the veil resolve if they're expecting me to to relay. Um, yeah. I like that play. Oh boy. Our opponent has a 16-16 construct. We can just concede. I'll let them just have their fun. That was uh, unfortunate. Um, the, the line that Bryant was describing was 
probably significantly better. Um, it would have allowed us to tempt our opponent into letting us resolve a veil and getting to Nas instead of relay. I didn't see that line. Um, I was thinking about how to best optimize around a nimble obstructionist because that was on my radar now and it was a wild thing for them to try to stifle a fetch um, when I had so many other triggered abilities that they could stifle which made me think that they had a second one because why would you waste that uh, and they had the ability to stifle two things in that turn so that was where my head was um, and Veil vale obviously doesn't stop that it's a it's a it's an ability not a spell but um, Pedal. <laughs> yes, thanks, Brian. Yes, Veil backup, sure, but they had two Force of Wills. And Veil backup with the Adnaz with Veil backup works really well for one Force of Will, not two. But that's fine. Um, another 2 3. I really like this list. Um, it was an unfortunate series of events where we got paired into Doomsday, Red Black Scam, and Karn Echoes. Three very bad matchups for us. Um, however, we had a potential win if I had seen a more uh, more nuanced line again in uh, in round three against Karn Echoes. Um, yeah, I am a strong and capable man. Ted Lasso for the win. Um, Colin for the win more specifically but I really like this list the four abrupt decays actually felt really good um, in previous leagues they have felt excellent um, obviously they only all came in against one opponent the Karn Echoes player um, otherwise we actually were bringing two of them in against our blue white opponent and obviously we just kind of crushed them with relay. There was no contest whatsoever. And then, um, let's see, against Doomsday, we wouldn't have brought it in. Against um, Red Black Scam, we wouldn't have brought any in. We didn't bring any in against our show and tell, sneak and show opponent. Um, but we were able to clutch that one with a Lotus Petal and um, Chrome Mox off at the top in the last two draws that we needed. So, felt pretty good. 2-3 uh, was a little bit of an unfortunate showing, but I am pretty excited about the opportunities to play this list, and I hope you are too. As Bryant was mentioning, you can go on to theepicstorm.com and get tutoring sessions from our very own Cookie Monster, and he will talk to you about all of the things that you can do to improve your combo game. And honestly, he knows what he's talking about. The results speak for themselves is a very successful, strong, and capable man. So, um, I hope you enjoyed all of this, uh, all of my live chatters, and then all of you on YouTube as well. <clears throat> on YouTube as well, excuse me, I can't speak, it's getting late. But thank you all for being here, and I will see you next week for some more combo action and stormy waters ahead. I'll see you around. <laughs>